Hello everyone. Welcome to lesson three of our Spring Security course. So in this lesson, I'm going to talk briefly about the URL authorization. So URL authorization in itself is a really, uh, it's a very interesting topic and it has a very advanced uses. For this lesson, I'm not going to talk about the advanced topics of the URL authorization because I'm going to talk about into the advanced section of the Spring Security. But in order to understand uh, the core concepts, you it's it's really critical that you understand the basics of the URL authorization. And if you remember from our first uh, lesson, we enable the Spring security by just adding few dependencies. And the moment we added the dependencies, right? Uh, for every request, there was a uh, login page that has that that are being thrown by the Spring security and how that how that works all together, right? So I'm going to talk about the URL authorization in detail. Um, what are the different things? I'm also going to give you an overview how the, the PC configuration box, how the Spring Security have those uh, configuration in place. And then uh, I'm also going to give you an overview about the, uh, the, the basics of how you override it and do some basic uh, kind of a high level of a configurations around it. So let's do one thing. Let's go back to our code base and I'm going to remove this for now, okay? So you see, we have extended the web security configuration adapter and in the web security configuration adapter, I just want you to look into the detail of this method configure, which is taking HTTP security as an input and then it's doing a certain thing. So let's see what things it's doing internally, right? So it's basically authorizing the request and what it is saying is authorize any request. The interesting thing is these are a fluid uh, code, right? Uh, in terms of if you read through it, you will get to understand what it's trying to do. In any case, so what it's saying is, you should authenticate any request which is coming into the system. So any request authenticate and form login and HTTP basic. So what it's saying is, authenticate any request, any request authenticate. And if it is not authenticated, give them a form login and perform a basic authentication. All right. So let's break into a few parts. So we are clear about this one, right? So any request should be authenticated, right? So whatever the URL we're trying to hit, uh, Spring Security will make sure that you are authenticated. Otherwise, else you will have the form, in, uh, form login screen, right? So that login page is thrown by the Spring Security. And once you fill all the details, perform a HTTP basic operation uh, or a login operation. So if you remember, I showed you in the very first uh, lesson that Spring Security is giving us a default password into the in the in the console, right? So it has a pre if you don't do any configuration, it have a predefined username, which is an admin. And every time you start your server, it will give you a password. So you can use that username and password to authenticate yourself. So once you do that, you will bypass this condition. But for every other customer, uh, they are going to get a login page. No, it's really good, right? But the problem is in the real world application, I don't want to do it for everything. Let's take an example of my registration page. If someone want to register it, that's the way they want to authenticate themselves, right? Or I might have a few pages or part of my application, which I really don't want anyone to force about it, right? For example, my if I'm an e-commerce seller, I'm selling some products online, for example, an Amazon or a Walmart, right? I, I don't want everyone to force to log in themselves until unless let's say they get into a checkout, right? I want everyone, whoever is there, if they want to get the details about the product, go ahead and do it, right? But the problem with this configuration is my application is up and running, okay? So I have added another controller, a register one. So let's try to hit the register one. And that's the problem. Now, even if I'm trying to go to the register page, I'm getting a login screen. And the reason for that one is 
this piece of a code which says all requests should be authenticated else I'm going to give you the login page. All right, let's do one thing. Let's go back, I'm going to add this code. Okay, all right. So now we are going to do a couple of things. Okay, so Spring Security in itself give us a few extension points and this is one of them and it also give us a few APIs which we are going to use uh, and we are going to give, talk about the uh, basics of those one. Okay, so the first thing what I'm going to do is I will say I'm going to use the ant. Sorry. Let me increase the size. Okay, so I'm going to use the and measure interface so this is a this is a way where i can configure the different urls and the url patterns and it takes a spring expression as an input so it opens up a whole new dimensions for us you can have a different patterns and the other thing is probably you don't want to configure each and every url of your application for the authorization right or authentication okay so you can use a spring expression and don't worry, we are going to talk about in lot details in our advanced chapters of this uh, tutorials. All right. So for now, what I want, I want logging and I want a register to be outside of the authentication process. Okay. And this ant matcher is, if you see, it takes n number of parameters. Okay. So you don't have to worry about adding everything here. And what I'm going to do is permit all. I don't have to explain it to you. It's as I said, right? it's a fluid API. So you can understand. So what I'm saying is authorize the request. If it matches with login and register permit all, you don't have to do anything. Okay. And now the next part is uh, probably I want to secure other part of application. So for my application, what we are building right now is I have a account, some account pages. So anything that have a prefix as an account, and then it can be anything. I want to make sure that those URLs are authenticated, right? So no, that means that only authenticated users should be able to access those URLs. Okay. So now I have added another matching pattern, which says if my if the URL has a prefix account, then it can be anything should have a role, whoever is trying to access has a role user. Okay, so that means if if the profile, the customer who is trying to access it don't have a role as a user, they will go to the, the, the Spring Security is going to intercept them and going to give them a login page. Now there are multiple variation of that one, okay? And the, and the thing with the has role is, that I right now I'm passing it as a user, but what it is accepting is as role underscore user. So wherever we are setting it, we will talk about it later on, but it's going to accept it. And if you are using, there are some changes that happen in the spring security. Okay. So instead of doing that, okay. use has authority so you don't have to append that role underscore that one okay and now the other thing is let's say if you have a multiple roles right if you want to give that access to a multiple roles users and let's say you have a special users you have an api users and anything like that so you can say has any authority and wow and then you can pass a list of all the different rules. Let's say special customers, okay, and something like that. All right. And the last part of it is the same and gives you a, again, gives you a more of flexibility because you can, uh, you can combine a different uh, expressions all together. And the other thing is it going to give you the form login and the basic HTTP basic security. All right. Uh, before we close this one, I, I just want to talk about a little bit about the different things. Uh, so we already talked about has any authority, has authority, has role, similarly has any rules, you can use that one, okay. 
you have <clears throat> you can give it for anonymous you can deny it for everyone All right and there is one interesting thing which it says uh, has IP address so you might not need it on day to day basis uh, so that means you just want to give access to this pattern to a certain IP addresses most probably this is useful in our internet applications you know the IPs up front you know that these those are a static set of IPs uh, you can uh, configure that as well all right uh, so I hope that this will give you a clear understanding and again just to give you an idea let's go back again as a 30 for now i will set it as like this one okay i'm going to stop it i'm going to restart the application okay and we will try to access our registration page let's see what happens all right so my application started let's go back to our browser let me increase the size of it a little bit okay now let's try again to open our register page if you remember earlier it was going to the login page let's see with those configurations what happened voila so we have our registration page right right so that happened because we said that okay these two urls are permittable and now if I'm still trying to access anything that account homepage I will have the login screen because I'm still saying those URLs are should be authenticated your only authenticated user is or user is authorized to access those URLs all right uh, I hope that that will give you a clear understanding uh, at least the basics of how the URL authorization works in the next uh, tutorial I'm going to talk about in details about the spring security filters how the those filters internally works uh, uh, how they works together how the configurations are being picked and all those things I hope you like this uh, tutorial and if you like it uh, please don't uh, forget to subscribe to my channel thanks for watching this tutorial